why do we need data testing in the first place? I'm sure I don't have to give you a background of why data is important. Every one of us know that data is one of the most important asset of any enterprise. Maintaining data quality is the key to ensure success in this information age where there, there is terabytes and petabytes of data created every second right across the internet and even on enterprise level. According to Gartner study, there are businesses which are losing close to 8 million every year due to bad data, right? Now, this number could be much higher for larger enterprises where data issues are more prevalent and critical. For example, the telecommunications sector or the insurance sector, the banking sector and the retail sector as well, right? So the data testing is a critical aspect and most of the organizations are spending a lot of effort and money to reduce it as much as possible and reduce the overall overhead of the dollar value loss due to this data inconsistency or poor data quality. Now, why do we need ETL testing specifically? ETL is commonly associated with any of the data warehousing projects. But in reality, any form of data movement from a source to a target can be considered as ETL. Large enterprises quite often have a need to move application data from one source to another or one application to another for data integration or data migration purposes. ETL testing is a data centric testing process to validate that the data has been transformed and loaded into the target system or the MDM systems as expected. Right, so that's the reason we need the ETL testing. Now within the enterprise between two different applications, if there is inconsistency in the way the data is being read, we have already lost it, right? You're already getting into that 8 million number of loss by having the bad data consistency, right? So what are the different challenges in ETL testing? Now ETL testing is different from application testing. Why? Because it requires a data centric testing approach. That's what we have covered in the further chapters. What are the different phases which should be considered during implementation and what are the different phases which should be considered during ETL testing. Now, some of the challenges in ETL testing are that the ETL testing involves comparing large volumes of data, which can go up to millions of records. Right now it is millions of records is pretty common, especially in telecom and insurance and banking industries. Now the data that needs to be tested is in heterogeneous data forms, right? Like your flat files, relational databases, your open API feeds for Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, your XML web services, your applications like SAP, Tibco, PeopleSoft, n number of sources, right? That's a challenge again, because you need to connect to all of those heterogeneous sources, bring them all to the same standard level of data, which the business wants to look at it for generating the reports, right? Now data is often transformed, which might require a complex ETL code or sometimes the SQL queries for comparing the data during the testing phase, right? And ETL testing is pretty much dependent on the availability of test data with different test scenarios. Now, with all these cross-border restrictions and dummy data creation and the scenarios with which we need to have, it is almost difficult to create test data with all the business scenarios and test them before it lands into production. Now, if there is real data in production that cannot be shared to a project member who is in offshore or who's out of the country, right? So that challenge is also there, right? Those are some of the challenges which we have to face during the ETL testing, right? We have in detailed explanation of multiple things which we'll learn in this course. So as we go further, we'll learn different aspects of this and how do we tackle them, all right? This is one of the common questions which is asked by most 